Mercedes are very close to bouncing back in the 2024 season, and it seems like they've made one step closer to this goal after Allison's latest statement. The technical director of the team that took his old role back from Mike Elliott has opened up about the challenges that the team is about to face in 2024, and for the first time ever, the glimpse of hope that has been offered to the Silver Arrows. But with such a short span of three months to catch up to such a huge gap, is Mercedes going to deliver on their promises? And more importantly, how will the W15 prove itself to be a different beast? The 2022 technical regulations have been quite poorly understood by Mercedes so far, which is why the burden of delivering a top-notch competitive car has arisen to the maximum level possible. The pressure on the technical director as well as the engineers is massive, especially with Lewis Hamilton's expectations for 2024 as well. This is why James Allison may have the most difficult job in the universe right now, and with some changes to the team's processes, the W15 will look very different from the previous challenges. When talking about this matter to a further extent, Allison went on to say, To the mind of a designer or a performance person in F1, a concept has actually nothing to do with the car. It's about a process by which you decide what good looks like and what bad looks like. It's your methodology for sort of sieving out all the many, many things you might put on the car and finding only the ones that you really think are going to add lap time. It's method. The car itself is just the output of that method. In the previous couple of months, Allison was quite frequently asked about why the previous two cars did not deliver the results everybody expected. Even though tons of upgrades have been implemented on the car, and the answer was quite simple. It's the philosophy and the concept of the car. This is something that Allison went on to elaborate further, adding, So, when you talk to us about the concept, what we're hearing is, do you think our wind tunnel weighting system wasn't right? And we've changed that, or the way we meshed in CFD, and we've changed the concept of that. That's what concept means to us, and the car just pops out on the far side of that when we apply that process and that concept. It has been no secret that the W15 will follow a brand new philosophy path that is set to revolutionize the approach that the team had up until now. And with so much information on their hand, the latest statement from Allison points towards one aspect that needs to be fixed in order for the Brackley-based team to have a competitive season with the new design and concept of the car. This is one of the reasons why the previous upgrades did not suit the current chassis and floor design. And when the teams decide to develop a car in a certain direction, it's not like they could revert one thing and bring it back to factory settings. It's a whole compilation of choices that brings the car exactly to the place it is. Therefore, fixing it is a very hard mission, and sometimes it's much better to start from scratch, like Mercedes did, than try to understand where you went wrong and fix the already existing mistakes. According to Allison, even though the team was far from competitive for race wins and championships in the past two years, 2024 is definitely not going to be a season like that, because this is the period that allowed the team to learn so much about the car and how they're going to approach the new season regarding the choice of a development path. When elaborating on the impact of the previous two years on Mercedes, Allison continued, So of course, the last two years have required us to adjust our approach and our methodology, and our concept, and as a result of that, the hardware that pops out on the far side of that will necessarily be different hardware because it's defined by different decisions and different weightings of what's important and what isn't. Everybody gets excited by the final product, but out-season is determined by the approach we decide on taking much earlier. This definitely brings a lot of hope to the Mercedes fans, because for the first time in three years, the team actually knows which path to take when it comes to developing their car, unlike in 2022 and 2023, where they stuck with a zero-pod design. While many were quick to bash Elliott and the engineering team of Mercedes for this outcome, including Hamilton, who at a certain point asked about responsibility and owning up to the mistakes from the engineers back in Brackley, Allison does not believe that this factor played that big of a role in how the car behaved in the past couple of years. After all, it's not like Mercedes dropped at the back of the grid. They did finish second in 2023, and Hamilton was the third-place driver behind the duo of Red Bull. So this is very well-founded momentum to ride on as Mercedes enters the 2024 season. Still, there are a couple of questions that are yet to be answered, and the only way we could see this question being answered is when the car hits the tarmac in Bahrain. But even with the side pods not being that big of an issue, Allison acknowledged that they placed a vital role in the W14's poor performance, which is why the team is now planning on a brand new approach in this field as well. Although the new ones might be very similar to the ones they introduced to the B-spec of the W14, which were far different from the zero pod design of the car. They will still represent a new approach to the car and will help both Hamilton and Russell in trying to cut down the lead to Red Bull in a record-breaking time.
Elaborating further on the impact that the side pods had last year, Alison added, I don't quite see the world the same way as you guys do. Looking at the side pod and deciding that's a concept. We definitely took a path with our car, and I would say that from the tip of the nose to the very back of the tail, which was not a competitive one. The most visually notable aspect of that was our side pods, but by no means the definitive factor. It was not right from the front all the way to the back, and that's the thing we have had to learn and have to deal with. That's taken us longer than we would have liked. But the side pods are maybe emblematic of a team that took a little too long to figure out which way was up, but by no means the distinguishing feature that sealed our fate. Regarding the driver's lineup, it's safe to assume that Mercedes has one of the most competitive duos on the grid, and that's a huge plus the team can count on, as both of its drivers are not only willing to provide solid and thorough feedback, but they're also ready to absolutely drive the wheels off the car in order to make it to the highest place on the podium. But in the last couple of statements, we've seen that Wolf has taken a bit more of a Hamilton position stance by saying that he's prolonging the deal with Mercedes for one purpose only, beating Red Bull with Hamilton and giving him the eighth record-breaking championship in his hands. This is to be expected, considering the amount of experience Hamilton has and the fact that Mercedes didn't listen to him when they should have in the past two years, a matter that Hamilton took out in public and complained about several times. But what Wolf might have forgotten is that Russell did not come to Mercedes to be the second version of Bottas, moving out of the way for Hamilton whenever the seven-time world champion would have the need to. Even Russell himself said that the goal for 2024 is to not only match Hamilton's competitiveness, but be better than him after going through a very bad season in which he only scored two podiums and finished eighth in the Drivers' Championship. But in 2022, Russell was able to prove to everyone that he can be the guy the team can put their trust in to deliver the great results, because after all, he is the last Mercedes race winner in the past two years. But there's an interesting argument that we would need to bring up about Russell and the W15's new design that Allison has talked about. Whenever Russell was delivering great results with the car, Hamilton tried out different setups, and the car was far from competitive. Even Russell acknowledged that there's so much to be extracted from it apart from him finishing the top five in almost every race. But as the car started to progress, and as the upgrade started to feel more and more familiar to the rest of the grid, Hamilton has delivered better results than Russell, which was shown through the 2023 season. So the question that arises is whether the young Brit is capable of driving competitive machinery alongside his teammate Hamilton, or is he, as the fans on social media called him, a good driver of bad cars? This is definitely a challenge that he would have to overcome in 2024 if he wants to be understood as a championship contender, not only in the Mercedes garage, but the entire F1 world as well. With this in mind, the W15 will also bring a lot of answers that we've been expecting the past couple of years. But after Allison's huge emphasis on the philosophy and design of the car being the leading cause of their recent failure, and also the bright light in the tunnel for 2024, do you believe Mercedes has what it takes to beat Red Bull? Let us know in the comments below.